Okay, what I like to do is show you how to find a um, polynomial when given zeros. It looks like we have the imaginary uh, zero or a complex zero. And then also we have a real zero of negative 10. So we want to find the polynomial, right? And when you want to find the polynomial of degree three, meaning there's going to be, at, there could be at most three different factors. Well, one thing you need to remember whenever you're dealing with complex zeros is that we always include the conjugate. So if one plus i is a zero, one minus i is also going to be a zero for my polynomial. Now, the next thing you need to remember is how do zeros, factors, and polynomials all relate to each other? Well, remember, um, when writing your zeros, this is the same thing as x equals 10. So therefore, this 0, or I'm sorry, here's my 0. So x equals 10. Oh, I'm sorry. x equals negative 10. x equals 1 plus i. And also, x equals 1 minus i. So then, when, if I want to write these as my factors, what I need to do is, remember, we set these equal to 0. So I could say x minus 10 is equal to 0, x minus 1 minus i is equal to 0, and x minus 1 uh, plus i is equal to 0. All right? So now what we're going to do is we need to figure out, well, I need to multiply all of my factors by each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to worry about multiplying my two factors that are complex because that looks like that's going to be some difficult stuff to worry about, right? So let's do that. Let's do x minus 1 minus i times x minus 1 plus i, and then let's do x minus i, 1, or 10. So remember, you take all your factors, and you set them all, and you multiply them. So if I want to multiply my two imaginaries by each other, I need to look at this and say, holy crap, that is like distributive property craziness. I know I have this i in there, and it's just like, I'm going to have to multiply x times here, x times negative 1, x times i, negative 1. That's a lot of stuff to do, right? So what I can do to help myself out is I can take a look at this and say, all right, how can I simplify this problem? And to do that, what I can do is there is a certain type of grouping, okay? And what I'm going to do is instead of writing, a, usually we always had, you could write your parentheses around these two as these are my zeros. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around this x minus 1. Since they're the same, I'm going to say x minus 1 minus i times x minus 1, actually, yep, parentheses, plus i. And what I notice when that happens is I actually have a difference of two squares. So these two terms are going to be the same, and these two terms are the same. And I have a difference of my operations, a negative and a positive. Therefore, what that tells me is if I was to multiply these using like the FOIL technique, my um, inside terms would cancel out. So really, technically, what I can just do is do my x minus 10. I can just multiply my front two terms, which is x minus 1 squared, and then minus the last two terms squared, which would be a negative i squared. Now, from dealing with complex numbers, we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. Well, minus a negative 1 is going to be a positive 1. All right. x minus 1 squared is going to give me x squared minus 2x uh, plus 1. And then I need to multiply all that times x minus 10. All right. So now to do all this, I just now I'm going to have to use you know my FOIL techniques and multiply this out. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 2x is a negative 2x squared. x times 1 is x. And, oh, I'm sorry. That's 2, right? You can combine these two to get 2 plus 2. x times 2 is 2x. Then I multiply the negative 10. Negative 10 times x squared is a negative 10x squared. Negative 10 times negative 2x is a 
positive 20x, and negative 2 times, negative 10 times 2 is a negative 20. Combine these together, I get x cubed minus 30x squared plus 22x minus 20. And that is my polynomial to a third degree with the zeros of 1 plus i and negative 10.